Hey there everybody, Robert Taylor with Wonderscape Creations, continuing on with my world building series with the current focus being the landscape auto material. Uh, so before we continue on with that, I would like to give a brief shout out to my Patreon supporters. Uh, if you would like to join my Patreon community, the link is down below. So this episode, we will be creating my version of the hype mask. Uh, generally speaking, most hype masks that I've seen have it to where it's a flawless, perfect straight line. It may fade, but it's always a straight line, which to me in my brain doesn't make sense. It's definitely not how it's like in the real world, uh, but it's how it's done. So we need to make a couple of nodes to make it possible. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is within the masks, I'm going to right click, create a new folder and just call this one mask functions uh, and I'm going to move the edge noise over there now we're gonna right click and type material function we're gonna call this one MF underscore height determination underscore WBT I'm gonna go ahead and open it up get this whole thing set up <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is do right click input for a function input and we want it to stay a vector three so we will keep it that way and we will name this world position now we're going to drag out of world position and do rate out float three components Next thing we're gonna do is out of the R, divide. I'm gonna drag out of the divide <clears throat> B and put in another input. This one we will name height period. I'm minimize that. And then out of this divide, we will type cosine, then one minus, <clears throat> then multiply. Then we'll come back to this divide, pull out and type sine. Place the sine into there. Then we're going to create another multiply. Drag out of this sign, I mean out of that multiply, and we're going to make a sign. And then we're going to pull out of this sign and type divide. And then for this divide, we will put the A into G and the B into height then we will do a another multiply drag out of this one <clears throat> and we will get an input and we're going to name this input height range finally we will do an add We'll put this one down here in the B. And then for here, we'll drag straight out of the B into the A of the add. Clean this up a little bit. I don't like spaghetti code, but here we are with spaghetti code. All right. So from here, now we just need to arrange them. And we are going to name it. I mean, we're well, actually, hmm. We don't need the end there. That can go away. There we go. From what I can see, I did not organize them. So we're going to keep it as is. Now, obviously, we're going to click out of here. 
don't think the paste is still there. No, it's not. This. But instead, we're going to do 0, 0.0. mask functions yeah. which means yes this one needs to change to this now that I think about it because it is a mask function there we go now we'll hit save Go ahead and close that out. I'm going to close these out because I don't need them. The next thing we shall do is come back to the masks folder, right click, material functions, mf underscore height mask underscore wbt. We are going to open it up. And the first thing we're going to do is find out why that's not showing up. Did I not save it? Oh, expose the library. Make sure that that's checked. There we go. So the first thing we will do is right click and type world position and it'll bring up absolute world position. We will put the X, Y, Z into there. Then for height range, I'm gonna drag out and I do a multiply and I multiply it by 2000 and you'll see why in a bit. Then I'll drag out and do an input and we will name this input height creation size default three and hold down the one to get the parameter the variable there and then out of height period we will then also type input Drag out, I don't know why I did that. Hold on one to get a 500. Click back on this input and we are going to name it height variation depth. Let me silence my phone because it seems to only want to go off while I am recording. By now you would think I would remember that. Then we're going to use preview default 500. So what this node is going to do now is instead of having a perfectly flawless straight line for the height mask, it's going to choose a point in a wave. Uh, it's going to essentially be in a wave pattern instead of a straight pattern. And we have various <laughs> ways of breaking that up, which we will be going through in this series. <clears throat> so then we're going to drag out of the results and do a subtract. And then a multiply. We're going to multiply it by 100. And the reason we want this multiplied by 100 is once you uh, introduce absolute world position, uh, it no longer goes at a one one meter size for the landscape. It now goes at a one centimeter size. So we want 100 centimeters. Uh, well, I do. Some people don't care. And then I'm going to type input. And we're going to name this input starting height. Obviously, we're going to check mark it. Default zero. Hold down the one for zero. Now out of the subtract, we will now type multiply.
And now we want a static switch. Out of the true, we want a one. And out of the false, we want a negative one. Then out of the switch, we want another input. Remember to change it to a static bool. We don't want it to stay as a bool. We will pull out of here. Um, um, bool to get a static bool. I want it to be true. We want use preview value. We're going to name this determine mask direction. Now, what this is going to do is if true, the mask will go up. If false, the mask will go down. And we'll show see this in action momentarily. Now we want a divide. We pull out of there. And we're going to name it. Well, first we need an input. Then we're going to get the height transition. Yeah, we'll just keep it at height transition. Hold on. No, we don't want S. Hold on the one. We're going to put it at the value of 1,000. And then click on this. We want to use the value default 1000. Okay, forgot to put here in the, the uh, static bool input default true. All right. So let's go ahead and make sure that the mask looks correct. We will organize all of our nodes momentarily. Going to right click. Did not put it in there. So click off all nodes. Expose the library. <clears throat> and we want this one to be the same as this one. Whoops. Copy. Paste. Save. There we go. Here's the height. Now we're going to place the height mask in there. That's a new one. Let's see what happens. And hit save. <coughs> and here we go. <coughs> As you can see right now, we have a bunch of circles. And that's why we wanted... Close that. That's why we wanted this at 2,000. If it wasn't at 2,000, these would be super, super tiny. And right now it's at 3. So now I'm going to hit the C for now to do height. What What is that one called? Variation size. Height, variation, size. We're going to put it at a size of 10. Hit save. One second. I have set something up incorrectly. All right, so here's what I set up incorrectly. This and this. They're backwards. I guess that's what happens when you do things slightly differently. There we go. So the height period pulls out of here, height range, and that's why you, you generally want these things to be in a specific order, I assume, because they weren't, weren't that they would be identical, and I'm not sure why they swapped in between my project and this project. So now we hit save. There we go. That looks a little more realistic. So I'll put this back to three, and now you can see the wave.
Fantastic. If I were to put this to a 1.1, now you're starting to see everything again. 2, 0.5, 1. So that's what gets us our wave. As you can see, it's a clear issue right here. <clears throat> Hit 2, and now it's clearly gone. You would adjust these things uh, from the height transition and the um, height variation depth. That's how you can uh, control these. Now, obviously, the next thing we would want, yeah, see, it's right here as well. Here we go. The next thing we will want is to add the noise mask, uh, the edge noise mask to our height mask, because we clearly have not done that here. So I'm going to pause the video to do that myself, uh, and then I will hit play so that I can show you what I did, uh, because I will be doing two steps of the height variation. Uh, so be right back. All right, I just noticed it wasn't paused this whole time. Uh, so I will speed up that that portion right there um, so that you guys don't have to worry about that. So for those that couldn't weren't paying too close of attention for it, what I did here is obviously I created a reroute node. So if you just type reroute, you'll have add named reroute declaration node. And I named it height mask so that I can then plug it in right here to the other code. And I have an edge noise mask uh, set up twice for a large one and a small one. Uh, so the order of it will look something like this. So go ahead and pause it so that you can get this order if this is the order you are wanting. Uh, and you will end up with something like this. Which can obviously be changed and looks completely different and immensely better using different noise masks. Uh, so let me just do a texture object. Let's instead of using noise, let's do the what's it called macro? Yeah, default macro variation, um, which in all reality is a noise te texture. And I'm going to place this in the slope edge noise. We're going to hit save, and there we go. So this obviously just isn't enough. Uh, so if I right click, no, hold down S and do large noise size, it's at 80. So if I put you at 200 and then copy and paste it to call this one small noise size and we'll put you at 50. So come here UVs, UVs, hit save. Looks a bit more on the ridiculous side, but you're you, you're hopefully getting my point. So we'll put you at 150. Put you at 15 again. No, there's something that's for some reason not. All right, so me and my genius self discovered what I did wrong. There were a couple of things. Uh, so the first thing, I missed my clamp. Uh, this keeps the values between 0 and 1. That way, anything that goes below 0 is put to 0. Anything that goes above 1 is put to 1. <clears throat> and then here, my edge noise UVs are what need to be 80, not my contrast. Same here for my small noise UVs need to be 15, not my contrast. Um, so I can put that back to how it was. 
save. <clears throat> now when we come and hook these up, we're going to go ahead and save everything here. Now if I come over here, there's one other thing I forgot to put back. That just like this. Save. There we go. Now if we come over here. <clears throat> for some reason the largest sets to 1. We're going to set you back to 80. And then we set you to 20. Or even... Two. And as you can see, there's now a bit more of a breakup on the transition. Obviously, if we increase the contrast, uh, th this line will disappear as it did in uh, the last episode. I'm going to hit a one, make this two. This I can do right here. I can just use this contrast. Use it for the. We'll just do the large one. Or maybe, let's see what happens when we just do the small one. Now we hit save. There we go. Look at that. Bunch of change. And it looks a whole lot better. Thank you guys for watching. And the next one we will do the noise mask. Uh, and then we need to do an angle mask and a um, an area mask. So we'll make sure we get those. And once the masks are completed we will gleefully go on to making our material. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.